I still like winning. I love winning. Richard Dunn has always been a bit of a scrapper. He's going to get it now, I know he is. I had a bit of a tough upbringing. You know, children's homes, etc., etc. You know, I strutted a hell of a lot. Um, and the only way, the only way that I knew, you know, was to find my way out of trouble. You know what I mean? Because I know I've got to talk myself out of trouble. You didn't have time. Bloody hell! It's too late. I have to get chinned. So you know, I started fighting early. In the ring, stuttering Richard found his voice, and so began the transformation from street fighting scaffolder to championship contender. Well, it's been hard. Um... Richard's been training every night and I've never seen him, well, I don't see him much. Building by day and boxing by night, he found glittering prizes that would have turned many a man's head. I could pick me up prizes sometimes, you know what I mean? You know, so I'd ask Jen what she needed for the kitchen, she'd say, no, they need an electric kettle. So I'd phone the place where I was fighting next and say, look, I want an electric kettle if I win. That's how it went on. By 1976, Richard was worth his weight in kettles. He was British heavyweight champion and was aiming to take on the world. I got this offer that the winner of the European title would fight the big fella, Muhammad Ali, for the heavyweight championship of the world. That is a dream come true, isn't it, for anybody? And I completely demolished a big German. It was six foot seven and three quarters. It was the most handsome German I've ever met, you know, to start with. And the most grotesque when I'd finished. I didn't have pattern. Victory over Germany's formerly most good-looking boxer gave Richard the dubious pleasure of fighting the greatest, Muhammad Ali, for the world heavyweight title. I'm the greatest fighter of all times! But I'm ready! I'm gonna dance! That's right. I'm gonna dance! That's right. I'm I thought I could beat him. Plus, I wouldn't have been there, and I mean that sincerely. I would not have gone there if I didn't think I could have beat him. Joe Frazier can't take my crown. George Foreman can't take my crown. You take my crown. My crown is too heavy for thy brow. He did all the ranting and the raving and the shouting and the boring, and I just sat nice and calm waiting for my turn. And when my turn came, I said, Every donkey likes to hurt itself, Bray. I'm the champion of the world! And he got really pissed off, stood up and walked out of the press conference. I'm a Yorkshire lad, man. I don't get to spoke that easy. I'm a dour Yorkshire man at all. Well, he's coming out to have a go. The first round, I said that I would run straight out and try to chin him early, and that's exactly what I tried to do, you know what I mean? But he must have known, you know. He was on his toes, he was dancing about, and I was chasing him. We're done fighting back. Third round, he battered lumps out of him, and he just he pushed me away and started jabbing and banging and... In the fourth round, he came straight out, he fainted with a right, bang, left hand, down on the deck. I thought, good night, Vienna. I've been down five times, like a bloody yo yo Yes, his legs have gone, and quite rightly, it's all over. If you've done your best, you should have no disgrace to yourself. And I thought I did my best. Sorry, no. That's the way it goes. Even in defeat, the good folk of Bradford gave Richard Dunn a tumultuous welcome. But within days, this battling hero was back on the scaffold. The $50,000 purse was lost in an ill-fated hotel investment. And he put a more serious foot wrong when he fell 50 feet from an oil rig platform. The doctor said I would never walk again. I said I'll be up on my feet within six months. Unfortunately, it was 18 months afterwards, but I got up. Like I might not be pretty when I'm walking, but I'm walking. He's still standing, and Richard Dunn can show his grandchildren a permanent reminder of his boxing and building prowess. They named the sports centre that I was working on, you know, before the fight, after me, and that was an unbelievable honour. Richard Dunn Sports Centre. It's there forever. Such a proud person.